Welcome to Science with Mr. Kilamile. In this video, I will demonstrate how diffusion is affected by distance. If you are doing an investigation, you can ask yourself, how does distance affect diffusion? If we are to give a prediction, we might say, the closer the litmus paper is to the acid, the quicker it will change from blue to red, and vice versa. If we think about the rate of diffusion, the shorter the distance, the higher the rate. The longer the distance, the lower the rate. Let's now prove our prediction experimentally. For this experiment, we will need the following materials. Blue litmus paper, vinegar, which is going to be our acid, graduated cylinder, paper towel, stirring rod, water, a pair of scissors, a timer which is not in the picture, and uh, tweezers which might be useful. Take the measuring cylinder, also known as a graduated cylinder. Remove the base so that the cylinder lies flat on the bench. Take the litmus paper and the stirring rod. The rod will be used to insert the litmus paper into the graduated cylinder. Take the vinegar, which is our acid. Acids change the color of blue litmus paper to red. When the litmus paper changes to red, it will show that the vinegar vapor is at that location. I can then measure the distance the vapor has traveled from the origin. We will need to cut the blue litmus paper into small pieces. We will need to know how many pieces of litmus paper can fit in the cylinder to get reasonable results. For our cylinder, six pieces fit better. We have a challenge to insert the piece of litmus paper into the cylinder so that they stick onto the glass. Water will do the trick. Water will not change the color of litmus paper because it has a neutral pH. I will pick up one piece of litmus paper and dip it into water. Use the stirring rod to take the litmus paper from the water. And then slowly insert the litmus paper into the cylinder starting from the far end. Do the same for the remaining five pieces, but this time placing them at equal intervals in the direction towards the opening of the cylinder. The next step is to introduce vinegar vapor into the cylinder. Use a piece of paper towel to soak the vinegar. You can also use a piece of cloth instead. Pour the vinegar into a jam jar lid so that you can soak the paper towel easily. Vinegar has a pungent smell just in case you're not used to it. Soak the paper towel in the vinegar. Wrap the vinegar wet paper towel at one end of the rubber stopper.
Gently close the open end of the cylinder with a rubber stopper. If the cylinder rolls, find means to keep it from moving. Start the timer as soon as the cylinder is closed. As from this time, do not disturb the setup until the end of the experiment. While the time is counting, I will demonstrate what observation I am expecting from the litmus paper. I will take a small piece of blue litmus paper and dip it into vinegar. As you can see, the blue litmus paper changed to red when in contact with an acid. This is one way for testing acids. I will now leave the experiment to run until all litmus papers have changed color. I will recall the time when each litmus paper completely changes to red. After 5 minutes, the first litmus paper's color is now completely red. The time is then recorded in a suitable data table. As you can see, the second litmus is changing to red. This is clear evidence that the vapor is diffusing inside the cylinder. Please note, distant measurements are taken from the end where diffusion starts and not from the zero mark of the cylinder. It is now time to process our raw data, that is the distance and the time we have recorded in the table. The rate of diffusion is calculated using the following formula. Rate equals to distance divided by time. After substituting each of my data set into the formula, I recorded the rates of diffusion in the right side of the table. When creating tables, it is important that columns or role titles and units are always represented correctly. Looking at the table, you can see that as the distance increases, the time taken for the particles to move from one end of the cylinder to the other also increases. But if you look at the rate column, you will notice that as the distance increases, the rate of diffusion decreases. Now let us see how this data is represented graphically. It is important to put variables on the correct axis, that is, independent variable on the x-axis and the dependent variable on the y-axis. This distance time graph shows the relationship between distance traveled by the acid particles and the time it takes. As the distance increases, the time increases exponentially. The distance versus rate of diffusion graph also shows an exponential relationship between these two variables. This time, as the distance increases, the rate of diffusion decreases. Thank you for watching this video. 
I hope it has helped you a lot to understand diffusion, how to set up a lab involving distance and rate of diffusion, collect data, and how to tabulate and graph your results.